Should be set to the same as it was last time, kind of thing. But let's see how it does.
Alright, hello everybody. Mute my stream. I am Sir Noble 10, unrelated to Sir Noble, and unfortunately my friend from last week, Goku, Goku, however you want to say his name, could not make it this week, so you've got me. Your best friend. It's me, your best friend. So, we have first map pick going to Duratan's Couch, who picked a map that's not showing up on this thing. But there he picked Hanamaru Temple. And we'll have Bunker Fun Times. They'll be doing first pick. And looking at their history a little bit, they seem to be pretty even teams. They've both run the same rankings, even Dirt Hands because it's a bit of head with one less game. But looking at how many maps they've won lost, they seem to have very consistent. The only team they've both played against the Nexus Cats, they both got dominated, so... I don't really think there's one team here that'll be stronger than the other, so hopefully we have a nice best of three tonight. Just sitting in the lobby and we'll see when we're ready to go. And hopefully my audio is going. Yeah, it's going. Let's uh, catch me. It's weird that it wasn't showing up. We are just waiting for the game to get underway. Got a bit of banter going on in the lobby. So tonight, I don't know, I didn't really look at their picks uh, for either team, so I don't really know what to expect. But it's Division C, where clear, not often meta isn't always banned priority, it's more comfort picks. So it could be anyone's guess what gets picked banned. Uh, I expect we we'll, might see a Diva ban, since a lot of people have been thinking Diva's annoying to play against, and I personally don't really know. I haven't played against many, although I don't like playing against Diva as a Garrosh, I know that. There's an Orphea ban. That's Orphea solid ban if you want a lot of melee frontliners, because five tanks into an Orphea does get shredded. Believe me, I tried that. Not fun. Melganus ban. I personal, f I personally like Mugans Band. One, don't like playing it. Two, don't like playing against it. His sleeps can be annoying. His stuns can be annoying. And what will they ban? See if they ban more of the tanks, more tank choke. Maybe they have another comfort ban they like getting rid of. Maybe. ETC, I think is personally think is one of the strongest tanks right now with his 13 that reduces cooldown on his ult. So good. Not great balance patch blizzard. Thanks. Not broken at all. <laughs> I'm loving it. But yeah. So will they continue continue the tank choke or will they ban out something else? A Sylvanas. Oh, it's good ban ban out. Don't want Sylvanas straight pushing. Especially for the Samurais on this map can be quite annoying. Not to mention, with the four man Sylvanas, she can stack her quests pretty well, I'd say. So let's see what the Bunker team will pick up for their first pick Bunker Fun Time. Johanna. Don't want to deal with the 
two tank bands. Just want that nice Johanna. Solid tank, good tank, front line, beefy front line. What will the coach pick in response? I have no idea. Deckard, uh, my personal favorite hero, hero right now, simply because I like rubies. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the fact that I'm always in there dying in the enemy team. I should switch scenes. A very good call. Yeah, the draft would probably be a good scene to see. And a Greyman. Good Greyman combo as well for the Deckard with the uh, 13 um, Healy Auto Attacks and Ana. I think the other strong healer right now. Anti heals is great for blowing up a target. And the Lee Ming. Really. Really means great at the blowing up targets and gain those repeats. So maybe we'll see Bunker Time going for a blow up comp. Single target. Might see a variant coming up with that. A ban. I, the poly ban a soul lane. I expect maybe a rag. I just think Dirtan's couch likes bad and in their rags. Samuro. Huh, I am I imagine that's a scouted band since you don't really see too many samurai bands out of the blue. And the other band we'll I feel like a tank band would be so there's the Muradin. I think works. Muradin's a nice divey tank and they were kind of showing that with a gray man and some Ruby Decker. Good comp for diving a bit. So see what the couch picks up in their last pair of picks. Not the last two picks, the last pair. Someone's gonna call me out for that, I know. They wait until the last second. They talking. Garrosh Tracer. A fish I know has, has a history on Tracer, so I'm not too surprised by that pick. And I personally like Garrosh playing Garrosh a fair bit right now. Oh, he's really good for getting those gladiator, gladiator gladiator medallions out. And the Jimmy really good for knocking back that Garrosh. And a Malthale for the solo lane. So Malthale could also be really good for that single target blow up if they're trying to do that. But they don't have the greatest lockdown for a single target. So we'll see if they try and do that or not. Jimmy some nice sustained damage. Looks like Turretan's couch still needs their soul laner, so I'd be almost surprised. I feel like a rag would be a good pick for them, although I'm not sure what they're thinking. Maybe a Sonya, too. There's the Sonya. Alright. Looking like Turretan's couch going for a bit more of a divey comp, except the Garrosh, who just is a single target pick off. I almost wish they swapped tanks. That might have been better. But then the Joe, Ana, Ming, Granier, Malthale. Looking for a single target blow up, but. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. In terms of draft, I think I would give my edge to Duratran's couch. I just. I think Deckard's Ruby is still a solid pick, especially when you have that with a like Garrosh, and I think Garrosh is also a solid pick. And then Joe, I think she will just struggle to peel both. Sonya and Garrosh off of her backline, which the their own they have a Jimmy knockback, which will definitely help and on a sleep potentially. So we'll see how this goes. Before I forget, let's change the stream screen to in game. Although the Malthel's last rides will be if he takes that will be really good for finishing targets. I I know a Jimmy and Ming will get low. And Deckard may struggle to heal a last rider target enough so they don't die without using a ruby. At least in my opinion. We'll see how this goes. Alright. And I managed to click someone at the very start of the game, so. Where are our targets? There we go. Alright, so on the left side we've got Durton's Couch with Gohan and Captain Wedge, Big Errol and Grammy. 
Wild card on Deckard. Apish has Tracer and Garrosh on... Crafting Wedge on Garrosh. On the right side, Bunker Fun Time, we have the Jimmy... Baptiste uh, on Jimmy. Bone Zed on uh, Ming. We've got... I cannot see these skins. Johanna... Zednam on Johanna and Bones on Ming. I feel like I said Bones twice. Fibji on Anna. I do not have that name. And Malthale is up there. Alumni Bree on Malthale. All right. We've got some passive play. We've got five men down here on the couch. Nice to get an early pick. Hopefully they get the soak because Malthale is currently pushing unintended. So I'm on our way up. So it shouldn't be so too much soak. That's one globe missing, but overall, not the biggest deal in the world. Garrosh looking to throw. Just throws a Joe. Didn't want to deal with Joe on the back line. Probably a good call. Not one I would make. <laughs> Sorry, team. Just know you love your Joes in the back line. Tracer looking to grab that vision camp early. Bit ballsy, but with her healing, I doubt she'll take much damage. Looking we might get in a fight over it. Bunker does. Oh, Bunker's looking to engage. Garrosh gets a nice throw to get them out. Bunker's looking to go in again. Johanna's getting to the point. Johanna's on that point. And gets it. Oh, almost gets it uncontested. So, although Johanna's taking a lot of damage, Garrosh is also low, but the armor is keeping him alive. Joe goes down. Will the Garrosh get out? And Grammy eats the orb, so Garrosh gets out. So he's going to get rooted. That's a good early lead for the couch. Going on top. Sonya and. Sonya grabbing the camp, a really good lead if she gets that. Although the Ming's coming up, I think the Sonya will be going down here, or they don't chase the kill. Never mind. Get the camp. So not too, too far high in XP, but Couch looking to get the Samurai camp early, where Bunker's looking for their turret. Spawn lane's being left unattended by both teams. Sonya's now low, and we have trouble capping, or contesting the soul lane. See if she gets a spin to win to heal. Oh, yep, yeah, she's getting it. Also, just kind of letting her get it free. And the couch looking to be a bit aggressive from the looks. So they're just looking to go into their turret camp. Joe is in lane, so there won't be a tank here. So I think that gives the advantage to the couch. Deck. Did Jimmy might go down quick? Oh, no. 4 2 without that second DPS there. Oh, look. Decker gain real low. I think the couch needs to leave here. Especially with the Johanna coming in. Although, and a mouth. Oh, the couch is. Oh, the couch. Oh, no. Well, Johanna dies to the camp, though. And Malthel might be going down here. If the Ming could pop off for three sets. Nope. Looks like the Tracer's gonna get... Oh, nope. Misses the false bomb, but... Tracer goes down, so a trade overall. And... We got the Samurai on. Bunker tank. However, Dirt Couch's Samurai did get a wall, so... I think overall advantage went to the Couch there. Couch, I think, getting all these little wins early game. Both teams just kind of rallying up. Couch clearing lane, bunker. It's mouth out consisting of the Garrosh, which will be painful for the Garrosh. Teams are coming to help. Grim. Hey man, Garrosh going low. Well, but the mouth has to get out as well. Excuse me. Couch is a bit low to re engage, so it looks like Bunker will get some free push, however they will be missing on Soak that Sonya is getting. We'll see if this happens in the bot lane with Soak, hopefully the couch soaks that. And Bunker really should also probably soak Taw, but I think they just want to get the objective. And they know with the Sonya up there that the couch will not be able to contest objective since they're five. Oh, so Sonya's rotating down. Yeah, however, they are forcing to engage before Sonya's here. Tracer is already low, Garrosh also looking low. And they get the objective in uncontested. And it looks like, yeah, once again, the couch is looking pretty low, not low, but unhealthy compared to Bunker. So they're looking to disengage. Sonya going back to the soak. She's going to get a watchtower, however, she will be interrupted. Will she get out this time? I hope not, because she really deserves to die. Yep, she did it. Might be worth it to let her finish that camp first, but. But hard to do that. Down and bot, we got four man looking to push in. Over there, a bit low. And we're getting a turret camp coming out from Bunker. So, surprisingly, Dirt Against Couch has not done a turret camp yet, I think. So it's showing they're 
despite those few early lead wins, Dirk and Scouts got, in my opinion, they're kind of falling behind in XP. Both bot lanes look very similar. Top lanes, edge goes to bunker. But I think the big difference here has been the turret camps. There hasn't been too, too many. Yeah, two to two kills. Although the mouth hole might be going down. Yep, mouth hole's down. I'll help even at the XP disadvantage, but there's a Sam coming here. Garage looking to go, but won't be there in time. We'll see how much value this Sam gets, but there's a fight brewing up the top, although the Garrosh is low. So he's gaining out fine. Looks like Couch will go clear, and both teams looking to clear. The Couch is Samurai getting a few more hits than bought, where Bunker's Samurai seems. might get. F I don't know, the Jimmy's there. It'll contest. Although they're looking to get the bot vision. in vision of. Bunker, which will probably force an engage, seeing, considering there's two of them there. So Apish gets the point and gets out, but it'll we'll probably just get recapped, but not the worst thing in the world. Doing the turret camp on top, Raymond gets that turret, and Bunker looking to get the top vision camp. However, they're going to get engaged on by the Garrosh. The Garrosh throws a Jimmy into the back line. No, Fruit does not connect to the Jimmy, but the Jimmy's looking low. Heal already went out, but I th that's a dead Jimmy. But Malthal just nopes out of there. However, the Samurai camp it did get wall and is gained some value. Overall, the XP has equalized a bit, but Bunker still is in the lead. Bunker will... Bunker fun times will probably just try and equalize the, um... Equal... Uh, not equalize, just passive until they get tens and force something. Malfa looking to... Do damage that Sonya, who they might rotate on. They are rotating on. Joe stopped for the camp, but... Let's go down to last reds. There you went down to last reds. Right. With that bot fort not looking very healthy. Dark and Cow's a contesting objective, even though they really shouldn't be. And we've got Bunker getting that free push. Couch is taking more damage on the top fort, and bot's kind of just passive. Bit of damage going to that Melthel, but nothing though, and I can't heal too quick before the Sonya shows up. They're looking to contest this. Sonya is here. Malthel being thrown to the team. The stun does miss. Taunt hitting into Joe Malthel. Will they go burnt down? Deckard's sleep to slow down. The Garrosh going down. And the Malthel's still alive. The Garrosh going down. The Sonya's going down. Tracer doing bad. bad and Jimmy going down. And the Malthel is so low. They just want that Malthel kill too much. Oh, and the resets, I think, really helps. It wasn't finishing resets, but just. Oh, and there goes the Tracer. It, it, the Jimmy just consistent damage. The, Ming just gave some big bursts and they just focused all the damage on the Malfeld and Joe and couldn't kill it. Unfortunate. And now it's looking like the Bunker has a very nice lead. Just won a nice team fight. They are two forts ahead, so they'll begin the passive XP bonus. And their camps are up. Where I And they took the enemy samurai. Jimmy doing the samurai on his own while his teammates do his turret. Pretty safe play right now. They can see most of the couch is defensive. Although the couch looks to be rotating for the samurai. This is still their chance to fight. They, well, they might just stop at vision, so samurai is being done. Excuse me. Top lane, no real fighting. Big soak there. Hopefully they soak that. They need this every... So what they can get. Bunker looks just to be rotating on the Sonya. There's the ping on the Sonya. Will the Sonya go down? Sonya uses leap. They might pop Bless Shield to get her, but... Yeah, there's the Bless Shield, Ming's combo misses due to the Bless Shield, and she dies the Lacerites. Oh, that's unfortunate. But, Dirty Hands Couch did get the fort and bot, so... Not without a sacrifice this kill was, but I think it allows them to be a bit more aggressive with less fear, even with 13 advantage, it's just a nice effort from that kill. They're going to steal their turret camp and just continue having control of the map. Samurai gain a bit more of the wall. Greywing gain soak. All in all, not too, too much happening right now. They're looking to just be aggressive, take whatever camps they can. But most of them are already red, so be a bit before anything happens with those. Greywings might be in a bad spot, depending on how they rotate. Although the Sonya scouts them, so the Greywing... 
It's getting out, yep. Bunker wants that samurai when it spawns. I've been getting that free siege damage. Garrosh soaking. Come on, Sonya. Why aren't you soaking? Soul Inner's doing, Hank's doing your job. Although Bunker just looks to be shorting as five, hoping to get that fight. Which, with their advantage, is not a horrible idea, but if they let Zerotan's couch soak uncontested for too long, they might equalize that XP advantage. So although they're looking to force something, they're pushing into towers. Malthal thrown over the gate. Oh, I saw that coming a mile away. Come on, Malthal. They have a Garrosh. And they're looking to force to push the fight, but Joe's unstoppable. Game out. Deckard sleep is should have known the Joe's to be unstoppable. Dan, Valkyrie, come on. That Joe had unstoppable. You weren't catching anyone else. All right, Bunker, looking to be a bit more defensive. They're looking to push. They probably shouldn't be since they're down one. Although they might get the Sonya pick. Oh, Joe's been forced upon. Hello, no one else seemed to want to fight the Joe. Everyone's got looking to get some free push. They should try and f force a fight if they will. Good time for them to force a fight. Even talent tiers. Tur Samurai would be a good place to force. However, Wedge seems to want something, but his team doesn't mean in position for it. He did taunt the Malthel. Will the Malthel go down? The Malthel goes down real quick. Everything went to that one. That's what they wanted that last fight. However, some good damage coming out from Bunker, forcing the couch to fall back. If couch can fall back and regroup, that'd be good for them. Oh, the Tracer gets low. Ruby value. Johanna gaining low, but the trait value with the Johanna still going down. Oh, she gets out with 40 health. My god. It's a miracle. And the Sonya, looking to get that Jimmy. I think the Jimmy's going to pay for the Joe's sins. And with that, the couch should get a objective uncontested. And they might even look to get the enemy samurai. Wedge wants it. He's got some of his team coming. And looks like Bunker just... They might throw some poke with the Ming, which could go bad. The Garrosh is low. But the Sonya is coming. Can come tank that. It is now a 4v5 with a low Garrosh. That Garrosh is probably about to get last Ritz. And sleep going on the point, and with the Joe and Malthel, again, burst it down, but the Garrosh does go down as well. Ming resets, not enough to get the fight in their favor, and the Samurai goes to the couch. But that was some major Ming damage. Garrosh and couch just gain the turret, well, the Samurai gets a little bit of value. Fortunately, no wave to push with it. Dirt and Couch still looking to catch up. They're still in the back burner for XP, but um, they can't, they've made it a lot closer. They're now about to have 16, so they'll be even talent tiers for a lot oh, more often than not, as opposed to before where they're a few levels behind. Top is taking significant damage, and the Jimmy is no longer clearing it, so that's a bit more value there. They're getting their Samurai, which honestly, I guess they just came back from responding, but... Sonya doing turret camp. And now it seems to be Dirt Hand's catch map. Jimmy just trying to soak safely under towers. Bunker just trying to look for a random picks, but the Joe game thrown. Unstoppable will get her out though. Decker trying to follow up with some CC, just get any hits, but not anyone. The samurai seems to be getting cleared by the Ming. I think she's the best clear for that, so we'll see how that goes. So the couch looking to force something up in top. It will be a 5v4 with the Ming and bot, so this will be a good time for the couch to engage, even with the fort there. If they can get a throw on some squishy, it will be a death. But the Joe and Malthel both have chances to live, depending on for the Malthel, depending on how much group. But there is a oh the Jimmy knockback saving him and his, and his teammate. And the Tracer being a bit echo oh no. Garrosh taking tons of damage and going down. Deckard Potion saves him from the dot, but not the last red. The Nano did get popped in the mouth out as well. Dark Knight Couch is on the retreat. They will probably get out without much further harassment, but Bunker will take the vision now, and camps won't really be up, so unfortunately not much to take press the advantage. They can probably get both visions, and that will help their XP. Get them to the 20 first. They're almost a level ahead in XP now. That so they'll probably get some push on the objective and maybe soak a bit. Just soak entirely. The lanes are pushing their favor, so they will be getting the soak. Not a great position Dirt and Couch is in. Honestly, the play for 
bunker might. Sh I guess uh, those would X equalize XP. Bunker game, there's samurai. Couch just soaking his five. So you're tired of getting killed, I guess. <laughs> those picks. But bunker doesn't really care about getting the picks right now. They just play in the map, gain the Sam, push in lane. Surprised they're not doing the turret, honestly. They like that turret. There are some root potions over here already set up, so that is a plus for Durkin's Couch. Durkin's Couch is looking to engage, scouting the bush, the mouth out, getting thrown what, away from his team. But it looks like the mouth out is still going. No! The mouth out is going down, the honest save. Mouth out. Oh, the mouth out living is now putting Durkin's Couch in a bad place. The Garrosh getting out because the Ming body blocked it. I mean, the Garrosh body blocked the Ming, but Tracer and Garrosh. Tracer and. And Greyman going down. And the Garrosh gonna get him. Nope. Shields will save him. The Decker. Will the Decker get out? Oh, the Onaf played fabulously saving his. Their mouth hell there. And with that, they will get the objective, get Samurai, and that will definitely be a key. Jimmy gained that last bit. And with that, Dragon Catch just looking to clear some stuff up. There's the keep there. I don't know if this is enough shots to get. Looks like that will get the top keep too. It looks like both keeps will be going down. And not sure if that might. Shouldn't be any core damage. One shot left, no shot left. Oh, it looks like Bunker is looking to core. I do think this is a mistake. The Dragon Couch is spawning and they're so close to 20s. Last ride's being used, but no kill coming out. The core is taking damage, but so is the Maltail. He is down. The Tracer looking to get the Jimmy, but having to recall. Garrosh is low. And the Sonya also low, and the core is down. I guess it was not a mistake. They had more core burn than I thought. And with that, the first game goes to Bunker Fun Time. my mic. Oh, I'm hearing the mechanical keys. Unfortunately, I can not really. My mic is on my face. So it's already as about as far as it's going to get. So yeah, let's look at the stats. Sonya did well so can, and so did the Ming and Malthale. Both had great soak. Overall, I think both teams did play well. Both teams did play well, but back and forth. But unfortunately, I think Gar like the couch just went for some Garrosh throws and burns low ups that just did not happen. And when they didn't happen, Bunker hit back hard, and it will happen, and it led to the couch's downfall. A few times that he did get the burst, like oh, I guess not a few times. When couch did get the burst, they continued on winning the fight, but. They didn't, they just had taken so much damage at the point that it was just no match for the rest of the team. So we'll see what, I don't know why I left that screen, but we'll see, we shall see what happens next. So with that loss, Kirsten Kirk Kaz gets to pick, first map, first pick. I feel like we shall be seeing them, I feel like they might go for a first pick, I feel like they're more of a comfort heroes as opposed to comfort maps. I don't know, it's a feel like off from the draft. <laughs> oh, I probably should. Just save, change screen so you don't have to be staring at my rank. Go back to this screen. So yeah, Punker Fun Times winning on Honomara, which was the couch's pick for maps. So 
I do think they will be going for first pick, especially based off that. Just their preferred map just didn't seem to get them a win. It's bunker fun times. We'll see what maps they want. They did ban two lane maps. Well, they just did win on a two lane map, so. And I don't think there's any more two lane maps left, so I'm not sure what they would pick for maps. I mean, message to Steam, which really should have been closed. Here's my invite. Let's see what's happening. We're on Towers of Doom with no draft yet, so. Let's get that Towers of Doom pick up there. Towers of Doom. First draft team is going to team one. Alright, so with Bunker that did pick Tides of Doom, so Couch did pick first pick. I should always trust my lobbies. <laughs> Alright, looks like Bunker just looking to change around the banner a bit. Going to Bonesy. Both teams are in here, so we should hopefully be starting shortly. Hey, Pish, demanding to be captain. Since Bones got to be captain. Couch is ready, just waiting on Bunker. Bunker is ready, so should be switching to drafts. So, here we go. It's drafty. <laughs> Towers of Doom. All right, we'll see if those bands were in fact comfort bands, or if they were, maybe they were targeted bands. We'll see. Or we'll see if there's anyone that decides they want to do a target ban. Well, Gannis. So, maybe that was targeted, maybe it was comfort. And the Orphea. Once again. Same bands coming out. Well, we'll see the follow-up of the same band that I forget what it was. I believe it was... That it was the sub on us. Well, we see the ETC ban again. I imagine we will. Oh, the Murden ban. Yeah, they did not like them. They really... oh, I already forgot if it was the Murden last game or if it was banned. I'm great at this. <laughs> Anyways, that's the Murden ban, so. Bit different, not the ETC ban. Will we see Dirt and Scouts pick up that ETC? Which I, I personally think they should. I think ETC is great, best character in the game. Heavy metal, let's go, babies. There's the ETC. Mehriachi skin. He's clearly not using the best skin, which is the Golden Master skin with the golden cock. Riding a golden cock with a Golden Master skin. Beautiful. And it's not inappropriate. I'm talking about a chicken, guys. Don't ban me from casting NGS. <laughs> There's the Johanna and Li Ming. They worked well the first game, and I think they'll work well again. Although we already do know that Couch is not doing for the garage, so the blow up the throw target might not be the same strategy, which Joe really helped to counter that game. The Ming did get some solid damage in the team fights. The orbs were just hitting so many of the Couch. There's the Deckard pick and a Hanzo. That one's different. Zekard, I think, was a 
great pick from them last game. The rubies really did help. Uh, I feel like the roots, roots could have been better, but not on the Deckard's fault. I just feel the Garrosh CC just was never in range of a Deckard. So it's just kind of hard for a Deckard to follow up on him with Roots. There's a Zul ban. Good map to ban Zul on. Don't want that double soak happening. With that, they might also ban a double. They do have the next pick, so. Or. Yeah, Dirty Hands Catch do have the next pick, so. A double soak. They could pick the double soak. No, oh, wait. That thing's being weird. It should be. Should be house. Should be the bunker has next pick. Yeah, it's weird. So yeah, not the double soaker, but the healer. The Ana was definitely. You guys heard me complimenting that Ana last game. Ana kept that mouth alive in that last fight. So not, not actually really surprised by that ban. However, will we see a double soaker picked up by the bunker? Bunker fun or bunker of bunker fun time. We'll see a samuro. So that was a target ban from last time around. And I think, oh, Malthel double sucking. So it's a four man Samurai? Or maybe four man Malthel double sucking Samurai. I imagine the Samurai will probably spend the game doing camps and the Malthel will be double soaking. Well, three man soaks and then has Samurai in. That's what I imagine will happen. All of the couch pick up to respond. They might go for a Yarel to try and counter the double soaks on with her on a swift horse talent thing. And they still need a DPS, and I feel like we might see another Tracer. The Yarek. Kalthazad. I'm excited to see a Kalthazad. I like Kalthazad, and with the Samurai, that's more stacks, but also less likely to hit your target. And the Joe is an interesting one to play Kalthazad into with that Unstoppable. If you can predict it's going to happen, it can be very useful, but if you don't take it into account, it'll ruin many a chain combo. And an Anduin. I like that pick. His pull will help save people from Kalthazad, in tombs, sleeps, and then also if he goes to protect, will also help with those. Everything I just listed as well. And then as well. He had another thing I liked, and I cannot remember what it was now, so I'll just skip that. However, they are a bit lacking on CC, even less than last time, with just the Joe with any stuns. Unless they have a wave of force, which I don't really consider it a sign. I think the creature is more of a knockback. So that could be the bane to the bunker this round. They might just not be able to lock down anything. Which I think. Although that wasn't really a bane to them last time, so. We'll see. The couch definitely going a bit more on the CC side this time. However, I do give this draft to bunker. I think they'll just be able to out macro the couch and win. However, I think this Kalthazad, excuse me, burping a lot, this Kalthazad play will just be really what the deciding factor for whether the couch does well or not. Alright, I'll quickly switch us so we actually get the game vision as opposed, the game banner as opposed to this banner which covers up too much stuff. That's not the right one. Oh my god. I'm great at this, guys. Okay. All right. Let's introduce the teams in 14 seconds. All right. On the left side, we have Dirt Dragon's Couch with Captain Wedge on ATC, Apish on Kelthazod, Gohan on Liaric. Wild Card is doing his Deckard again, and Hanzo is Big Egg Girl. Big Egg Girl is Hanzo. Whatever. Bunker Fun Time. We have Alumbri back on the Malthal. We have Batista on the Samro. We have Bone Zed on the Ming. Zednam on the Joe, and Anduin is being played by the Figably Bigably. And the Kalsas are already taking tons of damage. Not a good sign for the couch, but doesn't take much to heal them up either. There, once again, five main at mid, so they're looking to get some early pressure. Well, Bunker's already going for the um, map pressure. They're soaking top and bot, and couch needs to get to there quickly, or else they will lose soak. They clear mid quickly, send their soul laner top, and are rotating as four on bot. They're going to try and kill the Samuro. The chain is on the Samuro, but he is juking. Oh! Some nice jokes. Got him out of there. And looks like they're just gonna now just clear away. Joe holding the bush. You can see scouting that bush and Samuro being aggressive. Ming is in mid soaking and the York looks to be double soaking. Maybe. 
he's decided he decided to. Well he will lose soak top for this, I know. And the four man bot Oh! Good side with Anwin will go down. Question is how much damage will this Joe take? Probably not much, because he's already out and the Kelsey's are looks calmly well. Let's get some talents up there, shall we? Which we should talk about this last game. But I didn't. We see ETC not go in block party, because it's I think is a mistake, as much as I don't take it. But that Samurai, I think, will take a good chunk out of his team. Just some trading going on, on top. The Sappers will likely get in. I doubt Gohan will... Yeah, Gohan does not have the life to do that. And just trading camps and bot. Not much going on. ETC sucking. That could have been a spicy invade if Bunker knew had gone, because ETC was sucking. ETC is being aggressive. Tells a looking to get some stacks here. Gain the chain. But no root. Oh, the root will go on the Samuro, so that's a few more stacks. He is at 8. He's doing pretty good stacking. And the Leoric is double soaking, but... With the Samuro presser... I don't think it's going to be a fun time for this Leo. Down and bought. Sapper's just trading out. You can see on the Anduin. Will this Anduin go down? Chain misses, but the Anduin is getting low. But he does get out. Unfortunately, the Kelsal combo did not get off there. Samuro is off soaking, which will help their team. But overall, XP seems to be pretty close. Leo is taking a beating up and top. And the couch is catching that soaking mid. We have three altars. Deckard being aggressive on this bottom one, looking like he's taking up potions. Samuro looking to harass this. Objective and Malfa looking to get a free one. Couch is down here trying to lay. And Hanzo is up here trying to help commit to that. Malfa gets a free one. He works tan across for the top one. ETC slide on the Joe. Back and forth down here. Up in top we have the Leo is low. And the Hanzo's trying to help, but the Leo is looks to be going down. Kassel goes down in this fight down below. And this top one will go to to bunker. And this bot one will go to bunker. Decker and EC looking to be getting it out. And not a good start from Dirt Hens Couch. Luckily for them, this doesn't really affect their Mac. Like, doesn't really make it any harder to win. It's just less health on the core. There's no more XP for the other team, so that is a plus. Probably the easiest map to come back on if you lose all the early objectives, because Grand Speed, the objective. Like, it does matter, but also doesn't. We have two pressure in top. Looking to get some wall value. Turkin Scout is looking to force something in bot. It's rotating down, scouting bushes. But Bunker will just walk out. Although you can see rotating aggressively. But no team to follow up on that. Poor Gohan. Just being beat up on by two people. Deckard wants that camp. We'll see Hanzo going up and you see just being aggressive. The camp pops out back again on top with that. I expect we'll see Bunker be pushing in and trying to take that keep. Maybe, nope. Samuro buzzes off, and Malfo is low on ammo. Maybe gets a kill here. Down and bot. Not too, too much happening. Couch looking to invade. Oh, they're on the Anduin. I think that's a dead Anduin. The puzzle combo doesn't hit. Oh, the tables have turned, and there's no other damage with the Kelsozod. Was there. Hanzo was too far left, so the Anduin does get out. Samuel comes during the fight. It's going bad. Kalazal looks to be going down. If he is out of mana, he will likely also go down. He gets that last knockback off, and he is down. Kalazal is also looking to go down. Will the Decker be able to heal him? That's the root. Might just... No. Too much dot, and the Decker gets out. And the Hanzo. Hulking from his safe perch. Ming will get the bot objective, likely uncontested. Luckily, there's only just the one this time. Leo up here soaking. Got his breath of fresh air from instead of him getting beat, his team was getting beat. The Malfo gained that camp. Yeah. It's kinda what I thought they'd be playing. Bunker looking to be a bit more aggressive with their kill advantage, and now they're backing off now that it's all back. They will have alts first, so they can force something with that. ETC looking to help with the top soak. Then Leo now fighting a Samuro. God, I got his things down better. 
Much better for him, not getting that dog damage, but ETC not in a great place. Last Ritz, we'll get him. Mouthful's been on point for the last Ritz both games. Oh, the Kelth Sod stacking has slowed down. It's not in the worst place ever, but it definitely has slowed down. Couch just needs to soak, get their ults, and then try and make something happen with these Kelsey's on combo. Any couchers in the chat? I'm pretty sure a good chunk of the chat is by couchers. What's up? Oh, shoot, I have whispers on. Not do that. Anyways, um. We have. Because all looking to get some stacks in mid, and the freak. Freak chain on the Sam, I guess. Nothing in the top, which will leave his team at a 4v5 in bot. Looks like they realize that and they're looking to just. Nope, they are hard engaging. Never mind that. Cuthel's odd chain goes out on the Samro, and the Samro just busts us off. And the Malfoy gets the top camp, and Derrick's couch is still fighting the 5v4, but they have not been able to get anything locked down. Just not being slid upon, but. Looks like they have someone that just disconnects from the game, and light bomb going off in the in tomb, and so much going on. Uh, Kelso saw going down, and he is out. Malfoy has rejoined the game. Deckard getting a bit low. He should be, oh, nope, he's going down to that alt, and now we have Wedge and Leo. HC and Leo, will they get out? The objective being picked up by Bunker. Is that last race again? No, can't do that quick. My chat asking me what's up. Top is really low from those sappers. Bot wall is going down in mid. It's also in an unhealthy state. Dirtan's couch. Not in a great state here. Just it's like I thought would happen. Samro Melthel just playing the top half of the map with his team just doing the rest spot. Although they've been swapping out whoever I thought would be in the doing the camps. Samurai and Mouth have been swapping off, which it's working for them. Leo just struggling to keep up and looks like they're just both playing kind of passively. Couch looking to get something, but no. Bunker looking to push into bot. Deckard in an interesting spot. But the Johanna decides not to follow up. I think that could have been a dead Deckard if he, she had committed. And Leark dying down and up and top. So I think this will be the end of top for, for the couch. Oh my god. Yep, there goes that. Oh, there's a light bomb going off, and the Kelsey's are definitely going down. Sorry, guys, I was reading chat there for a second. And the arrow went off somewhere. It looks to hit a Joe to help get the Deckard out from the looks. And Top actually living. Nope, now dead. Had 200 health. One minion got that hit. Two objectives are up. This could be a nice 10 hits for the bunker, which looks like they're getting uncontested. Which, unfortunately, I think the couch has to accept, since they're down a talent and a man. Kuzzlezod at 18 stacks, his stacking has definitely slowed, and I think this Kuzzlezod needs to target not the Samuro with his chains, because it just disappears. Looks like Bot will be going down, so with that, mid is a Jordan catch last four. Leo trying to do something on top, but I don't think he'll be able to do anything. Especially with these sappers coming in top. Couch forcing something down in Bot, but Bunker just leaving. We've got ETC getting rooted and taking a huge chunk of damage. But he just heals that back up. Frog Rock, baby. So Couch will probably take those three sappers in, and then Leo will live in mid. Or, yeah, he'll live. But it looks like they will lose mid in the process. Couch does manage to get bought, so they won't be under siege. Samuro looking to do the freaking Oh, arrow goes off into... Yeah, yeah, best arrow in A. 
Sam were looking to get. Oh no, it's the meth on the camp. The Hurricane Scouts was looking to get something there, but it just didn't pan out, I guess. They're looking to engage here. They definitely need to force something soon. You see Mosh hitting nothing but air. Tethel's all going down to them. Everything. Deckard gained hit by. Oh, light bomb going off. Gets two of them, but the Leo was unstoppable. You see, still in the back line. He does manage to get out. And unfortunately, Deckard did go down. So unfortunately, this is looking like it will be game for the couch, unless they can... Because, yeah, Bunker needs two. If you catch Bunker getting bought uncontested, so yeah, that's the game. Unfortunately, I just think the couch did not draft much macro for this map, considering the enemy team comp. And it definitely hurt them, as you can see by this map. And it... The couch, the Kalthazar did well, but unfortunately, I think Samuro just struggled with the Samuro. He just threw the chain of Samuro, and Samuro just buzzed off, and then as soon as the stacking just kind of fizzled later, as they just couldn't take those fights. Anyways, game summary. Unfortunately, I did not add Zep to my friends list. Let's see if anyone wants to get an interview. I don't have any questions, so this will be fun. Said Nim. So map two going to bunker fun time. Gotta love my chat there, guys. So yeah, as you can see, the Samuro and Malthel both did great macro things. That XP soaked. Even, like, the Leo didn't even compete with the one of them. Couch just got so far behind. Fortunately, we can't really see how many camps they got. That'd be quite a nice sight. Kalsazad only ended the game around 18 stacks, so unfortunately, the Kalsazad was not enough to get them in the game. Oh. Hello. Hello. Didn't realize you were here. So ah, I just came over here. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent you a PM, so I was waiting for a response from that. But right. um, congratulations I and stream in the party chat thing. <laughs> Pardon? What was that? I just I stream. We got Zedneb here, the captain of Bunker Fun Time. So you got you guys got a nice two zero victory. How does that feel? It feels nice. I really enjoyed those games. Um, we we had to fix ourselves from the past couple games we had. We uh had a little uh, roster issues and stuff. A little oh, bit really? of drafting, but we, we kind of focused on drafting a little bit more this time. Yeah, and, I uh, I loved your draft second game. I like saw that draft. I'm like, the couch is losing that game hard. I didn't say oh, hard, but like I gave you guys the edge with that draft. I was like, you guys have the macro advantage, sure. And I was like, only hope for the couch was the Kalfazod, which unfortunately did not pan out for them. That first game was a lot closer. I think you guys both played the map well there. And definitely. Oh yeah, they were definitely all over the place. We just had to fix ourselves when they invaded that first map. I didn't go up in time. I was like, yeah, I need to do that more often. I'm... <laughs> yeah, I think what was really the deciding factor of that Hanamura game was um, if the Garrosh throw target got blown up or not. Which I have to say, I think you're on a save the Malthal quite a few times. But uh, yeah, if the Malthal got burst and whatnot, then it was kind of GG for that. Oh yeah, uh, Fig, he, with Anna, he just nanos Malthiel, he gets thrown back, he saves himself, it's freaking mm -hmm. amazing. I have, I, give, <laughs> I don't give, even have to worry about him. Give my kudos to your Anna, because I think psh, that Anna, secure, like, not quite carried you, but really helped you guys that first game. I mean, Fig always carries us. <laughs> so I noticed with your, team. yeah, I noticed with your guys' bands, you banned two lane maps. Is there, like, both your bands were two lane maps, is there a reason for that? You guys don't like two lane maps, or what? Or you just don't like those maps? For in the bunker, reasons. we never really know what we're going to ban until we're banning it. Mm. <laughs> was that more <laughs> based horrible. off of what Dirt Hands catched in the past, or was that just kind of random, like, we, in the wind kind of thing, what you wanted that night? Basically, each week, we like to focus certain things, and this week, we really didn't focus two lane maps, so I was like, yeah, mm. let's uh, ban those. Yeah, because I think um, Dirt Hands catch caught wind of that. It's why they went to Hanamura first game. Yeah. Only on the two lane map. <laughs> I forgot they get got banned off of that map, and I forgot to ban it. 
but luckily it worked out for us. I'm pretty sure it, Captain Wedge, in one of his favorite maps, is actually Hanamura. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, man, I feel bad now. Sorry, give me your guys' strats. <laughs> I don't know if that's even up to date or not, but... Yeah, I, I've sh I just, I've just heard him in the past talking about wanting to be able to play it more. And, yeah. Um, any moments in the first game you really liked, or...? Moments in the first game, just uh, Fig with his, like I said, nanos on the, the mouthfield, just watching him go flying into their team, and I was like, mm. oh, that's where he wants to be, so I'll just Yeah, I, like, I, most of the game, I was watching pretty much your mouthfield and your Ana, like, your mouthfield game, those last rits to get yeah. all those confirmed kills, really helped you guys. I think early in the game, you guys did have a few, like, like, miss like, small losses, like, you didn't get, like, the vision camps, like, think... Like, just small losses. But I think overall, like, you guys got some wins overall, and then it went back and forth, and yeah. Anyways, the second game. So, I saw the Durkens coach ban Samuro first game. Is that a targeted ban at you guys? Was that a targeted ban? You think? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. If you if you go back and watch one of our games, I forget who it was against, um, we we did a pretty good Samuro. We do a lot of good Samuro games, but... Uh, yeah, I it's hate pretty good notorious in DFC right never now. on my team. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like which is which is great for us because it lets us pick other heroes. Mm -hmm. But if we get the samurai, it's great for us too. So it's yeah, win -win. so when you guys drafted that samurai, I was thinking you guys would do like Malfell double soak samurai, get the camps, and like three man kind of bought with the occasional help from samurai. But what you guys did. What I thought was interesting was the Samro and Malthel kind of both did the double soak and both did camps, which I think ended up working really well for you guys. Because mm -hmm. it just made, led to more map pressure. And I think Dirt Hands Couch just couldn't get the bot lane pressure fights that they needed to be able to counter that. Was that like initially your goal was just to kind of like play it more like that or did it just kind of happen like that? Like I said, in the bunker, we're pretty disorganized. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we like to fill out the team in the early game, see what they do, and then we adjust from there. Um, Batista's pretty good at, at recognizing where he needs to be, so we really don't have to worry about him. Mm. And so is Bree, so they have kind of both the solo laner mentality. Mm. So they you do think what they he want. noticed that the Leo was struggling with the mouth ale and decided to mm -hmm. press the advantage then? That's exactly what he did. Yeah. And then, uh, then we, as with a Joe, I can do whatever mm -hmm. I want in the front and not allow them to get to the back unless Fig steps up like he did. Mm hmm. Yeah, your Joe was both games pretty damn useful. Like, helped your Joe would survive Garrosh first, which did help you out in quite a few fights. Second game oh, yeah. and just allowed you guys to kind of just be there 3v4 when you probably shouldn't have, kind of thing. Yeah. And on the first game, uh, I was just upset. I used my uh, trait too early instead of being on the thing and using it. <laughs> I really beat myself up on that one. Otherwise, I would have lived there. That samurai, is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. No, on the or... vision camp where I died, just standing there on the point. Oh, like, yes, that one. Trait. Oh, yeah, that was unfortunate. <laughs> Any moments in the second game you were quite a fond of then? If you want to speak of that? second game. Uh, let's see, second game. Just watching the, the Malthy on the Samro just play off each other, just going lane to lane to lane, pushing lane and going back. But my favorite part was when I saw the uh, the KTZ. He, he, like, peeked out, and I just went on him and everyone else crashed on him he died was that the uh objective in mid kind of thing where you had the triple objective you guys there was a 2v2 fight top kind of thing and 3v3 in mid one we were kind of rotating to the mid and everyone else got there before me but i was staying in an aggressive vision spot mm -hmm. and just like rotating aggressively and he kind of like rotated next to me and i just went on him i know there's a kelsa's on kill i completely missed because i was watching yeah i to be honest i was watching the samurai and mouth a lot of that game okay <laughs> I think a lot of the game was really their macro, in my opinion. I was watching the, the four-man, I guess you could call it, but three-man a fair bit. Oh, yeah. But like, I, I, I think 50% of the game was just pretty much Mouth L and Samurai, whatever they were doing. I say Fig carries us, but it's actually our solo laner. <laughs> <laughs> you all carry yourselves. You're all great yep, players. We carry ourselves. <laughs> Kudos to everyone. And Bones right. did amazing on his thing. <laughs> all right, you got any shout-outs you want to do? Well, Velk would be mad at me if I didn't say thank you to Velk's mom for being amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for casting. No problem. I really appreciate it. I didn't notice I was going to be in cast until today. I don't know if you picked it up today or not. Oh, no, I picked it up. I as, I'm, it. I'm pretty sure I picked it up as soon as it was on the website. <laughs> or like an hour right. after it was up. 
Awesome. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Fig for uh, healing Bree and Bree for being awesome. And just playing Samuro Batista, he, he did great on that. Thank you. And then I know I'm forgetting one. I think it's Bones, but we just blame him. So it's uh, a <laughs> uh, classic. Everything's <laughs> got one. Yep. It's hashtag blame Bones, by the way. Anyways, well, congratulations on your 2-0 win and your 40-0 Towers of Doom game. Mighty impressive.